front and center, Mikio. It is about uh, the 10 year yields now back up above 3%. Is it a buying opportunity? Are you waiting for it to hit 3.5% before dipping in? Yeah, I would wait. I mean, uh, interest rates are more likely to go up over time than down. Uh, there's been a, a bit of a counter move recently, but yes, I would say the bigger picture hasn't changed. The yields are still headed higher and there's a risk of a hawkish surprise uh, going forward because the market has been a bit too dovish, I think, in its expectations recently. How high can yields go, Mikio? Well, you know, in the in the short term, I think three and a half to four is probably a reasonable expectation. Not much more. We do have most likely uh, a peaking inflation. That is true. The the question is rather, you know, to how, to what degree will the slowdown, uh, how fast and uh, how sustainable and sustained will the slowdown in a, in the headline inflation rate be? So, you know, I wouldn't be too bearish on bonds, but uh, yeah. The current level is certainly not not high enough given where we are. How do you position in, a, in anticipation of Jackson Hole and given all the uncertainties out there, including, uh, you know, the power crunch in Europe, the expectations of a recession? Yeah, so, um, I mean, you know, at the risk of sounding a bit uh, self-congratulatory, we did basically take profit uh, going into this a uh, few days ago. Um, we, we have a pragmatic approach to in these markets, even though you might say that I'm a bit uh, on the bearish side from 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 uh, from a macro perspective. But um, if you look at the sell off in the first half, it was one of the worst sell offs in more than 100 years. Uh, and after that, you, sh you do tend to have rebounds, which is what we had in July and August on hopes that we have seen peak inflation. But, you know, once that rally was there, which was a very strong rally in the S&P, we took profit and now we're underweight equities again. We avoid Europe precisely for the region that you mentioned. Uh, and we look for another dip to buy back into these markets uh, from a counter cyclical perspective. Right. Mikio, and just to, I guess, uh, take, take that last point you made, you want to buy the dip, but you also expect treasuries to hit three and a half and four percent under what scenario would equities do well under that other scenario where treasuries just fall off cliff i think uh i think equities would do well once they have uh once the market and you probably uh will see it in in a bit more commit uh, in a in a higher commitment in the fed communication that uh, inflation is actually going to slow down towards the target within a reasonable time, which is, you know, one or two years. Uh, and we can also avoid a recession. So basically, once we have confidence that the soft landing uh, is almost a certainty, that's when uh, when you can have high rates or relatively high rates higher than they used to be in the past and still have uh, robust uh, equity markets. I mean, the, the good thing about having uh, plentiful inflation, let's say, is that you always have nominal GDP growth. And if you have nominal GDP mm. growth, you have nominal revenue growth in equities. So it's very hard to imagine an earnings recession. If you can avoid, and if you can avoid an earnings recession, equities will do well. But that's, you know, still a couple of quarters away before we can make the judgment. Right. Uh, not in all places, though. And I think Japan is one of those places, I believe, uh, where you're not getting that earnings recession. Mm -hmm. So that's one you favor, equity-wise. Yeah, that is definitely one we favor. There's also some other special factors. Japan has been delayed uh, in terms of its reopening. It's basically reopening with a lag to, towards the other, uh, essentially the Western countries. And it's also coming out of a, of a, it actually has a very good cyclical recovery. I mean, the potential growth rate here is more or less zero. Uh, but right now, the economy is growing at 2%. That's a boom by Japanese standards. And uh, Japanese companies, moreover, they've learned to make a profit out of no revenue growth, no nominal uh, GDP growth. Um, so that's a combination that it makes uh, Japanese equities attractive while everybody else is having bigger problems, especially in the rest of Asia and also in Europe. Mikio, what happens to risk assets? Might the energy crisis pull down risk assets even more eventually? Well, the way I see it is I wouldn't want to make a firm bet on which direction energy prices will go, let's say, in the, in the remaining half year. I, I would like to point out that not just energy prices, but actually commodity prices across the board are, are down a lot from their peaks a year to date. Um, and um, I think the directional call is one thing. Um, it might actually 
be diffused already. But the problem is we have a lot of uncertainty uh, surrounding Ukraine. So it could go both ways. That's why I wouldn't take a position on these things. Uh, but it is a good sign that equity, that, um, sorry, uh, commodity prices on a broad basis are actually down a lot, you know, double digit in many areas from their high, uh, year to date highs. And that you're going to see that in the inflation rate going forward, especially in goods inflation. Um, so I don't have a problem with with uh, I wouldn't want to make a bet in the direction. But I do know there is an uncertainty, especially in Europe, you know, regarding Ukraine and with the scarcity of energy that is um, that Europe is headed into as they approach winter. So that's a big, that's a problem. Yeah, and, and Nikia, just a broader story then. You know, this is all new to many people in the market right now, inflation where it is. So help us understand then, the path of inflation down might take one or two years. What do you think the investment environment is going to be? And what, how does the Fed massage that message as inflation does fall, not knowing if it actually gets to 2%? Well, look, I mean... The Fed, there is a lot of criticism, and I, I feel a bit humbled because you had uh, Professor Taylor uh, just uh, talking before me. Um, but, you know, there is a lot of criticism um, all about the Fed. But at the end of the day, if you look at what the market is pricing in for the inflation path, it's actually doing a pretty good job. So my book would be here that um, we do have a lot of noise now because inflation is very high now. Uh, and has been over the past few months. You have an election coming up in the U.S. in November, uh, where, of course, inflation is a huge topic, especially gas prices. But once that's over, I think people, markets will find out that, you know, having, I don't know, uh, having a 3 4% handle of inflation uh, and with nominal GDP growing at a, you know, high single-digit rate is actually not that bad for equities. But uh, we just have to wait until the market digests what it actually means to have inflation that is higher than what it used to be in the, uh, you know, in the, in the notes in the 2010s.